In this video, I want to discuss how you can bring a subdivision surface model from Blender into Plasticity. Now, you can use any subdivision surface model from any app, but unless you have Maya and you can export directly to IGIS, um, you pretty much are going to have to at least bring your model into Blender, and then you're going to have to use a plugin. Um, the other way, though, well, you can actually take that subdivision surface model from any app um, and bring it into Fusion 360, convert it into a T-spline and bring it in. So those are two different ways that you can do it. There may be other ways, but I'm not aware of them. Um, if anybody is aware of other ways to do it, then please say so in the comments. Uh, I'm happy to learn something from anyone else, too. So here we have our subdivision surface model. And the first way we're going to look at is using Fusion 360. So what we want to do is we want to export this model. We just want to go file and then export and export it as an OBJ and then name it whatever you want. Um, now we're going to go into Fusion 360 and take a look at that process. Here in Fusion 360, what we want to do is we want to import our model that we just had. The first thing we want to do is we want to right click up here and say, do not capture design history. Say continue and then go to insert, come down to mesh. And then we want to go and select our model. And here it is. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that it comes in oriented differently. Um, that's one thing that does bother me about using Fusion 360 for this. Um, but it does work. So let's go ahead and rotate it the correct way. Um, another thing that I don't like about this is that if I wanted to take this back into Blender, I'd have to line everything back up again, and I don't care for that part either. Um, there are ways that you can set up Fusion and Blender to work together so that things will come in oriented correctly. Um, I might cover that in another tutorial, um, but this is not really the way I recommend doing it. But anyway, moving on. So we have our polygon model inside of Fusion. And what we want to do now, we notice that if we expand bodies, we have the arm. Now, it says here that the mesh is not closed. And I know that it's open on this end, but that's fine. I don't, that doesn't matter. So what we want to do now is we want to switch over to the form tools. We want to go to utilities and we want to say convert. So what we want to do is select a drop down and go quad mesh to T-spline, select our quad mesh, and we want to say okay. Give it a minute and it converts. So now we have our T-spline body here. So we don't need this anymore. We can delete it. Let's go ahead and grab this. Let's go to utilities again and convert again. Now this time what we're going to do is we're going to go T-splines to B-rep. So we select our T-spline model and then here's keep edges. Now this is kind of important. Every one of these edges on these faces we want to keep because we want to use that for modeling inside of plasticity. If you don't select that, well, I'll just show you. If you don't select that and you say, okay, then you get something like this. And I mean, not that it's terrible, but it just doesn't give us enough areas to actually use this for modeling inside of plasticity, at least not accurately. So I'm going to undo that. And we're going to try this again. We're going to select our body, utilities, convert. So we're going to go from T-splines to B-rep again, but this time we're going to say keep edges. We're going to select all the edges in the model, and then we're going to say OK. Now this will take a little bit longer to convert, but it's going to give us more what we want inside of plasticity. So now that we have that, we're going to delete our T-spline body. You have to delete it because if you don't, it won't allow you to export it as a step file. So let's delete that. So now we have our body and then we can go export and then we set it to step our location and give it a name. Now let's go inside of plasticity and see what this looks like. So now what we want to do is we want to go append. And we want to grab our step file. We want to say OK. We 
Now this is going to take a minute to convert, so I want to pause the video. In this particular case, it took two minutes. Uh, but one thing that I want everyone to be aware of is that using this method, sometimes it can take a while. I had a plane that took like 14 minutes to convert and, and open up in here. So, and it's not a problem with plasticity. Plasticity is fine. It's just that this is very complicated geometry. So when you're doing it this way, you just have to be prepared to wait for a while for it to import and bring it in. So now what I want to do is I want to show the edges and you can see here that it faithfully translated it and brought it into plasticity. So the next thing I want to do, and, and this is something that's pretty cool. I want to show that it does have G2 continuity across the mesh. So if we come in here and let's turn the edges off, we can see that across each one of those, it does have G2 continuity. Now you can see that the curvature looks a little wonky, but if you think about it, um, the human form, it has a lot of little dips and divots and things like that. So this is pretty normal to see. Uh, it's not a car body that's perfectly straight, but it does carry G2 continuity across all the patches. So that's one thing that I kind of wanted to point out too, that's pretty cool about using either one of these methods. So now that we've looked at that, let's take a look at using the export plugin. The export plugin is made by someone called Rajiv Nair, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, Rajiv has done something that's absolutely fantastic. He's created an IGES exporter that actually brings them in and acts like T-splines. So it's going to give you a CAD accurate surface, which is really, really nice. But anyway, to get this plugin, you go to downloads and then there's export I just add on. You click that, and it's going to take you to Gumroad and it's $10. Um, it's just a wonderful plugin, I think. Um, but be aware it is computational, so it takes a while to export things. So now that we take a look at that, and I will leave a link in the download this or description below the video. So you install the plugin. It's installed just like every other plugin in Blender. And once you've installed it, there's something that you have to do. You need to go to the add modifier. So we have our object. We're going to go to add modifier. We need to add a subdivision surface. We want to make sure that it's set to level one. Uh, you don't want this set any higher because you could crash your computer. Um, but anyway, we set it to level one and do not apply it. And it also has to be at the end of the modifier stack. So if there's any other modifiers on your mesh, you have to make sure that the subdivision is at the very end and that there's only one. So once you do that, then all you have to do is just go export and then export IGES. So now let's take a look in plasticity, what that looks like. So back in plasticity, we're going to go append. And now we want to grab the arm IGES that we exported. We're going to say, okay. And I'm going to pause the video until this is done. Now you can see this is the results that we get using the IGES plugin. These little spider web type areas, that's just because the geometry is pretty complex right there in those areas. Um, and this is the way that the IGES exporter just exports it. And that's fine too because we can completely work with that. I can show you. In future videos, I can show you how you can clean this up really well. But one thing that I wanted to show here is that, again, we have G2 continuity across the entire surface, which is great. But if we take a look at what came in from Fusion, see the size difference? So if you're using Fusion, one thing you're going to be dealing with is constantly resizing and repositioning your models. I personally can't stand that. I want to just be able to export it. I want it to come into plasticity at the right size and the right location, uh, orientation, everything else. I just want to be able to work on it and then send it right back into Blender and just keep on going. And using this plugin, you can do that. Using Fusion, it's going to be a lot more work, it's going to be a lot more tedious, and it's just a pain. Um, but I wanted to show people both of the methods that I know of to make this happen. 
So there's the two methods that I know of. Again, if anybody knows any other ways, please leave comments. I'm, I'm happy to read them and try them out. If it's a better way, I'll do it. Um, but right now, I know that for at least for me, this is the best way is using this plugin. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I don't make any money on it. It's just a plugin that I bought and I really enjoy using. And I thought I would share this information with the rest of you. So if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.